So here, so here we are again. You know, y'all know I'm always in the kitchen cooking. So I got, a, I got a meal uh, on the menu. We still want to talk about transmutation, some intellectual food, some some food for the for the soul and for the mind. Uh, I, I, I'm still discussing. You know, as I told you guys, I'm studying cell biology, developmental biology, behaviorism, all these different uh, sciences. And uh, right now, I've been looking at change, transmutation, uh, and I want to mention, I mentioned this in my last video, but I just kind of want to dig in for a few minutes and just kind of like shed some more light on it. Uh, I'm using the elements from the periodic table to explain to us how we are to change, right? What kind of changes we make, how we change, how, you know, lasting changes, etc. And there are two main events or two uh, things that must precipitate or that precedes change, right? Two things have to occur before there is real change. The first, there's two types of changes. There's nuclear. A nuclear reaction has to precede a change. Or a chemical reaction has to precede a change. Now, the difference is nuclear reaction changes, I mentioned before, it's the nucleus is the center of the atom. Within the nucleus, there's protons. The number of protons give the element its identity. Case in point, Matter of fact, no, wait. The number of protons give the element its identity. And the if a proton is added to an to an atom or removed from an atom, it changes the element entirely. Case in point, magnesium has 12 protons. If I was somehow able to remove a proton from magnesium, we now have 11 protons. So the atomic value or the atomic number is now 11, not 12. If the number is 11, that means magnesium is no longer magnesium. It is now sodium. Same thing holds true if we do it in the reverse. If I was to add a proton to an element that has 11 numbers, which 11 protons, which is sodium, sodium is no longer sodium, it will become magnesium. Because the atomic number identifies or gives the identity to the element. So 12 protons would mean magnesium, 11 would mean sodium, and vice versa. If we add a, a proton to sodium, it becomes magnesium, so on and so forth. You, I'm sure you guys get that. The reason that is important is because that right there illustrates to me, at least, based off my research, how we are to go about to make that lasting and permanent and true change. To give a, to, to put a, a depiction, give an illustration of that, in modern history, we all are familiar with Malcolm X, Right? When he first went into prison, he was Detroit Red. If you if you never read this book, by I think the author is Alex Haley. It's the autobiography of Malcolm X. I read it some years ago. When he went in, he was Detroit Red. We know he was a thief, pimp, you know, ran the street, drug deal, all of that, right? And when he came out, he came out, as we all know, one of the greatest leaders we've had in, in, in uh, recent history, Malcolm X. And I, you know, I, I, he's one of my, you know, one of the guys that I respect and look up to, you know, he's one of the, one of the real ones, one of the greats. So that, that right there illustrates to me, or is a depiction of a nuclear reaction, that kind of a change where you get a whole different Detroit red Malcolm X go in as Detroit red, come out as Malcolm X, totally two different people. If you if you if you did a profile, just a, a profile of both of them without a face, you would say these are two different people. Well, that's the textbook definition of a nuclear reaction. Sodium is sodium, potassium is potassium. No, excuse me. Magnesium is magnesium, sodium is sodium. Detroit Red is Detroit Red, Malcolm X is Malcolm X. You see what I'm saying? That's a nuclear reaction. A chemical reaction is a is a is it's it's dissembling, right? Dissembling is a form of pretentious, pretentious pretension, right? Pre pretentious portrayal of what one fancies himself to be. It's a fanciful way of, of acting. It's a it's 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 you get an Oscar because that's exactly what you're doing. You're acting, and the reason why you're acting and it's not real because chemical reactions don't change the nature of the atom. I'll say it again. A chemical reaction does not interact with the the uh, nucleus. It actually occurs outside of the nucleus. And this is what, now remember, the nucleus represents the heart. 
And the most important organ in your body is your heart. One can argue maybe it's your brain, whatever, but be that as may, we know the heart is extremely important. Right? So if there's no change in the heart, then there's no real change. And I don't mean the heart, the organ. I mean your soul, your spirit, your inner being, your energy, your chi, your flow, the currents that are flowing through you. If there's no change in those currents, there's no true change. There's been a chemical reaction. Now, here's why chemical reaction doesn't work. Because the chemical reaction triggers the rearrangement of the electrons. The electrons are like the eight planets that orbits the sun. They orbit the nucleus. They are not in the nucleus. They're outside. So they're not in the heart. See what I'm saying? They're not inside of the heart. They're outside of the heart. They're in what's called the valence shells. Therefore, they're called valence electrons. Valence shells are just layers that orbits the uh, nucleus. And within each layer, you have the electrons. Again, picture the solar system and it will make perfect uh, mental sense to you. Now, think about that. So when there's a chemical reaction, the electrons, let's say they're flowing A, B, C, D, E. When there's a chemical reaction, the sequence changes. So instead of A, B, C, D, it becomes E, B, A, C. Whatever the uh, order or arrangement is, it changes, it modifies, it alters. That's it. There's an altering or a modification of the order in which the electrons are orbiting the nucleus. But it doesn't, unlike in a nuclear reaction, the nucleus literally, it either loses an electron or gains one, and in so doing, it actually changes the element itself, as I mentioned before. In a chemical reaction, there is no change. There's just simply a rearranging of, of a, a, a reshuffling of the deck, okay? So this is why if a person is, is, a, is a cheat, prolific cheater, right? They're very, they, uh, you know... Uh, Cheating prolifer proliferation. You know, you have nuclear proliferation. You have cheaters proliferation. Like they're prolific at cheating. You know, they're 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 playing the, they're playing the game. You know, if a person is a thief, right? They're pro prolific at, at thievery. All they're going to do is rearrange the way they steal, or rearrange the way they cheat. All right, I used to cheat Mondays and Wednesdays. All right, she caught me on Mondays and Wednesdays. I got to switch up. We got to do Saturdays and Sunday. Right? Whatever it is, that they, all they're going to do is modify their behavior, right? And go deeper and darker into whatever their uh, noxious craft is, poisonous craft, noxious craft. They're just going to go deeper into that so that they don't get caught, right? Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be, it could be anything. You know, I'll use your imagination. So, if a person has a chemical reaction, they're just going to figure out a way to rearrange what they're doing that's already bad, right? So that it doesn't look that bad. It's called dissembling, right? There's a pretension there. So if a person really wants to change, there must be a, a nuclear reaction. There must be a change uh, within the, the core. So that's the that those are the two main changes that we find in, 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 chemi in chemistry, if you're a chemist, if you study chemistry, if you study uh, any, any, any one of these sciences, you'll find out that, that those are the two major uh, events that must precipitate or must uh, precede any form of change. And one is just a shallow rearranging of one's behavior. The other is actually a lasting and indefinite change. So... And the reason why I study this and the reason why I talk about it is because I want to be the best version of myself. You know, I I, I, I feel cool. I, you know, I'm not that cool, but, you know, whatever. You know, I like, cool. I I don't I don't think I'm cool. I'm, you know, I never had swag or anything like that. I knew people who had swag. That's how I know I didn't have it. You know what I'm saying? I see, growing up, I seen dudes with swag, so I knew I, I, I didn't have the swag. You know, I, I knew dudes that were mad cool. That's cool dudes. It's, it's very, you know, I, I didn't have, I wasn't a cool dude. Wasn't a square either, though. You know what I mean? I was like somewhere in between. <laughs> in between a cool guy and a, and a square. I was in the middle somewhere. Queer, cool square, square cool, whatever. But, <laughs> yeah, so, but... The point is, though, it's it's important that, like, I want to be the best version of myself, right? I do believe there, that we all have latent, dormant powers, inner inner chemistry powers, chemical 
uh, powers within us that we are not activating. And uh, we have to change the way we eat. Eating is a big thing, right? That, that you know, becoming more organic, more natural, being conscious of the, the chemicals that you're putting in your body, the hormones, the steroids, being conscious of these things because they do interact with our chemicals and they do create reactions and, you know, your mood and your attitude and the way you, you know, a lot of that, it, it alters your behavior. Uh, exercising, excellent way to also, you know, uh, bring about whatever, you know, change you want to make because exercising you, aside from just the physical, the phenotype, which is your outward uh, appearance, it also affects the genotype because you, you, you release a lot of different chemicals, whether it's, uh, endorphins, whether it's, uh, dopamine, whether, you know, serotonin, oxytocin, you release a lot of these different chemicals within the brain. There's certain parts of the brain, like the uh, nucleus accumbens, right? Uh, the VTA, ventral tegmental area, the striatum, these are parts of the brain that are actually like, uh, the, 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 the pleasure network, right? They all secrete these different chemicals. So exercising, brings a lot of that about. So aside from you just looking, you know, physically in shape, you're also, you know, uh, enhancing and taking care of yourself internally, uh, in, ter in terms of chemicals. So, and also you have to, you have to be very clear about what you want to change into. That's, that's important. Like you got to know exactly what you want to change into. You can't just say, I want to change, but don't know what, what the change require, what are the requirements? You know, if you, whatever you, so you will decide what you want to change into, then you have to also know what are the requirements, you know, what are the, what are the requisites for this change? And then you have to do, you have to separate it. A lot of separation is going to have to, is required. That's just a fact. Whether you know what you want to change into or not, one thing is required is separation because you're going to have to separate yourself from friends, family members, people who are doing all the things that you don't want to do anymore, that you don't want to be. You know, you have to put yourself in, in environments that are conducive to your growth. Because if you study microbiology, you have uh, selective media. You have, I spoke about this in previous videos. You have selective media, culture media, and media in, my, in terms of microbiology. Media in terms of microbiology means the environment. So you, you have to, uh, if you study microbiology, you realize that certain organisms or certain bacteria, they thrive. It's called their niche, right? Ecological niche. Your ecological niche is the area in which you are best suited and fitted to survive. So you, you can't, you have to put yourself in the environment that's conducive uh, uh, to what you are, uh, the change that you desire. So you can, you, so that means, that means by default, but with, by default, nothing else with, with, if nothing else is known about what you want to be, one thing is a fact that you have to separate from the old places you used to be. Because those places that you used to be are what's responsible for who you are now. The old environments that you were in condition, fashion, mold, and shape you to be who you are now. If you study uh, microbiology and you study uh, bacterial medias and mediums, you'll see how certain bacteria can't grow or can't survive unless they're in a certain uh, pH. It's called a pH, potential hydrogen. So that's another topic, though. But the point is, you have to make sure you separate yourself from a lot of things, a lot of people, a lot of environments, and place yourself in the environment that you it, 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 that, that is suitable or fitted for what you want to change into or transmutate into. So, you know... That's just some some more uh, gems that I want to share with you guys on uh, on transmutation and cellular development, develop, developmental biology. I hope that uh, some of it was useful. Until next time, I'm gonna keep on cooking, and uh, you know I'm gonna be serving up on the menu. All right, cooking the books—a whole new meaning to cooking the books.